you are watching the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community. I am one of your hosts, Juan. And I'm your other host, John Paul Leck. And together we are... Rope Break. Break. How's every single one of you today? Another day in imprisonment. And we're talking to all of our inmates right here. And we are here to talk about AW Dynamite. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty decent show, I want to say. Not as yeah. good as last week. Yeah, and also, I mean, this show, I think we're all a little disappointed because they were promised, like, the Blood and Guts match. But, you know, you're not going to do that kind of match, like, you know, all those guys together. And, I mean, maybe they did it just for, like, safety reasons, just for all the wrestlers being interacting. You know, if you have all those men in the ring at once. Or maybe they did it because they're like, hey, like, we're going to try to hold this over for a live crowd. But, like I said, at least what, what the shows that AEW is giving us, they're better than WWE's. Because they're at least giving us matches. They're at least continuing storylines and stuff. Where WWE is kind of like, well, well, I mean, they don't even care about storylines. Because look at the two Mania matches that were announced. The Street oh, yeah. Profits and Angel Garza and Andrade and Aleister Black versus Bobby Lashley. So, yeah. You know, at least we're getting people that care about the storyline. And like you said, it wasn't the best show, but, you know, it was a it was a fun two hours for what it was. And for what it was, like you said, like, uh, you can tell that, like, there's a lot of more travel issues. Like, people are trying to be more careful. There's a lot of precautions. Um, I know that, like, I think it starts, like, at 12 a.m., so in, like, an hour and a half or so. Like, the state of uh, Florida is also closing down everything. So that's mm -hmm. why WWE, like, has to really, really move really fast to wrap it up to wrap up wrestlemania uh we're not going to give you any spoilers we'll be keeping it ready for you guys as the show goes off the air but like i think that like they're about to like close it down and like jean paul saying it was a decent it was a decent show not as good as last week but like we understand the situations like people are getting you know i uh, they're more uncomfortable like there's no people are losing hope and they shouldn't do that but there's a lot of uncertainty and that's mm -hmm. what, like, you can see that it's transpiring into the wrestlers, into everybody else. And Jean-Paul told me something really important. It's like, at least they're trying to distract ourselves and everybody, like, to, like, for whatever's going on. And I want to give them props. And like you said, they gave us matches. So the show, Mr. Le Egg, before we start, well, thank you so very much for everybody that's watching. New subscribers, old subscribers, thank you, everybody, for watching our videos. We have a bunch of content for you guys. Doom with Mr. Le Egg. Great, great, great opening, unboxing, great game. You know, Jean-Paul is even, like, wearing the, the helmet and everything. Good stuff, Mr. Le Egg right there. He also opens the another uh, wrestling crate, Lucha team, legit, like, two legit uh, shirts, Luchasaurus, and also uh, the uh, Lucha Bros. We didn't see them today for obvious reasons, but at least legit. El Generico, he got, like, a, a little, like, action figure. Yep, the micro brawler, yep, and some, some good stuff. And like I said, with all this free time... I got to watch that uh, Taya Valkyrie. Hey, Taya Valkyrie, well, he got a DVD, matches, like, a, yep. you know, La Huera Loca, like Jean-Paul was saying, you know, like, the legit, like, she's she's a good wrestler. I don't know if when her contract expires, she's going to go join her husband, John Morrison. We'll see. But now, let's backtrack bloop, 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 to AEW Dynamite. The show opens with Tony Chavani and Cody Rhodes, Kenny Omega on commentary. Maybe that took us away. It wasn't that great, but, like, yeah. you got you to gotta work with what you're given. So they were saying that, you know, the show must go on. We're going to see Darby Allen against Keith Sabin. Jack Hager is going to be in action. The exalted one, Brody Lee, is going to be debuting. And then against QT Marshall. And then Kenny Omega against Sammy Guevara for the AAA Mega Championship. And we're going to start with, like, Cody going against Jimmy Havoc. So they're like, okay, go, Cody. You got to go. I'll see you then. I'll see you in a little bit, bro. Yeah, yeah. He, he was like, I'm going to get done talking with you guys. And I'm going to walk right through that tunnel and on the stage and then out to the ring. So see you later. Yeah, it's Jean Paul. <laughs> He's like, good luck, buddy. Go, 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 have your match. So for what it is, like even even Jean Paul was saying to me, you know, before we went on air, like the match was like good, good. But see, Jimmy Havoc, like Kenny Omega, pretty much bury Havoc on yeah. commentary. If you talk about like burying people on commentary, Kenny Omega, you get another championship right there. Yeah, because like I mean, uh, Tony Schiavone, he tried a little bit. He was like, oh yeah, you know. Like, you know, Jimmy Havoc this and like trying to say a little bit, but in the same breath at the end of the sentence, he'd be saying like how good Cody was as well. And then like, like I said, uh, Kenny Omega was like, oh yeah, he's a star of AEW Dark and he's finally getting his chance to, you know, have a good showing here tonight. And it's like, you're saying like that your guy's like the star of main event. Yeah. WWE, you know, like the show main event. So 
So it's like, you know, they didn't do much to help him, but you know, you you and again, a match like this is obvious. What was Jimmy Havoc gonna get the win? Upset Cody, where would he have gone? You know, what I mean, this was a just a match that they had Jimmy Havoc look strong, but see, his style isn't a style that complements a lot of people because he's one of them like hardcore wrestlers who's like, oh, I'm gonna pull out the staple gun, I'm gonna staple like you know your hand to the mat, I'm gonna do you know like he's like a gimmick hardcore wrestler. He can do yeah. some moves in that, but his main claim to fame is that. So you need to put him with guys who fit that style. And in a match with no toys, no weapons, and just a basic wrestling match, he kind of falls a little short. And I agree that like, completely. Like you said, I, he needs props yeah. to, to to compensate his yeah. lack of, like I will say, mo wrestling moves to move set and all of that. For what it was, hey, you know what? It was like it was like a, you know a little better than what WWE will give us. So and at, at least we got to see that. The one thing that like they should have never done is like take away the wrestlers that they were like you know by ringside and stuff like because oh, he got yeah. added a lot of uh, you know at least they were, oh they were you could hear them screaming you could hear where like who they were rooting for and all of that but like actually they have them backstage but as related as you said in the beginning I think it's because of the fear of the coronavirus mm -hmm. and see we have the guts of saying what it is because a lot of people just go around the bush no we said what it is COVID nineteen. So maybe that's the fear that they have, but like for what it was, it was it was good. Uh, Brandy was a, was also like the ring announcer once again, and like you said, I agree with you. Like she does a good job at that. She should stay as that, and because that, that's what she does. Maybe just alternate with a Justin Roberts. That yeah. would be a little better. So Jean Paul, move highlights of the match. Cody slams Jimmy Havoc into the buckles, but Havoc then counters him with an arm drag into the turnbuckle, followed by a suplex into them. Cody flips Havoc over the ropes onto the ramp, then goes out and grabs hold of him and for a suplex onto the ropes. Then Cody runs into the ramp through the curtain, and then he runs back for a clothesline and then Havoc over the ropes into him. That spot, everybody's like, what the hell is Cody doing? What the hell? What the hell? Oh, he's he's getting in. Oh, oh he's coming back. He's coming back. It's, uh, yeah, I don't like know the, what, like, what like, the intention of that. Like they said, well, I mean, like if you ever seen that like famous gif, I think the great Muda does it to Hulk Hogan. Yes. In Japan, where he runs down the ramp, but clotheslines it back in the ring. I think, like, they said that on commentary, like, oh, he's trying to emulate the great Muda, but the way that AEW's ramp was set up and, like, the way he ran and the camera angle, you couldn't tell that. If they would have been a better angle and there, he would have ran, like, just up the ramp and straight down. But, you know, I mean, hey, like you said, it was a weird spot, but this match itself was just kind of weird. I would have rather seen, like, Cody maybe not wrestle. Yeah. And just seeing, like, somebody else go against Jimmy Havoc, like, who we haven't seen. Like, maybe Sean Spears actually wrestle, you know, somebody like that. Th that would be fine because, oh, like, he gets paid for just being, like, sitting down on that chair. And the chairman yeah. that only gets paid to be sitting. So, Cody hits a release suplex, then takes his the belt off, and then he throws it at Brandy. Brandy catches it. She goes, yes, I got it. Cody leaves Jimmy and looks for the springboard cutter, but Havoc catches him and meet her with the arm bar. Kind of like, um, botch that, that spot right there. Corey, Cody reaches for the ropes and then Havoc continues to focus on the arm. Then Cody gets Havoc on the top rope. Then he climbs up behind it and then he hits a reverse suplex and then two crossroads for the win. You know, pretty simple to the point. Did we think Jimmy Havoc was going to win? Hell no. No. <laughs> and, he, and Cody did show that little aggression there because he hit one crossroads and Kenny was like, oh, okay, yeah, legit. And then he like went to go and then he like, picked him up for the, for, to hit a second one, which he did, like you said, and then Kenny was like, okay, okay, like, you know, just pin him, like, just, you know, calm down, and then he pinned him, and he's like, oh, okay, like, it's legit, <laughs> like, he didn't beat him up after the match, because he was like, you know, it's good to be aggressive and want to win your match, but, like, you know, if the guy's done, he's done, you don't need to hit it with him again. And then also, so, like, keep, keep face, your face, don't be, yeah. you know, pose attack, yeah. just relax, yeah, it, it done. Yeah. And then, Mr. Leek, we get a video package for one of our guys. And he calls himself what he truly is. One of the greatest minds in professional wrestling. Jake DDT Snake Roberts. He says, he's talking about Lance Archer. He says that Archer is champing at the, a bit to get a match in AEW. And then he says that AEW has been around for a while. But nobody, absolutely nobody wants a piece of Lance Archer. And then he calls on to Caesar, Cody. And then to give Lance a chance. And then he tells him to bring the old man, Arn and Anderson. And bring Delilah. Brandy, even just for a sit down. So, pretty much another promo. We see that this match, they keep building it up. And, like you said, Cody's probably put, put over Lazanger. 
There's the you know, yeah, there's I no think, way that he's not going to be put over by him. And, and the one thing I do like is after this, Cody, he was like, oh, you know, when he's talking about this, he's like, I'm not going to let like what Lance Archer's first match is going to be against me. He's like, no. He's like, I mean, he's like, it might be, who knows? But like you said, he's going to debut next week because Cody tried to act like he's not, you know, one of the bookers. He's like, it could be me. I don't know. It's like, mm-hmm. come on, you write the show. Like, mm-hmm. you know what's going on. But, you know, I feel like they sh- they shouldn't have these two guys clash right away because, like, Cody shouldn't be in all these different feuds. Like you said, I would ha- build Lance Archer up the same way like they're doing with the Exalted one. And then when we eventually get blood and guts, then that's when you have Lance Archer come out, maybe cause, you know, the elite to match by attacking Cody. And then that's how you, like, really jumpstart their feud. Yeah, this, there has to be some kind of, like, altercation between the two. There has to yeah. be some, like, a reason within the two for them to fight. Yeah, Rather because they want... Like, oh, yeah. Paul, I want a match with you. Okay. Sure. Yeah, because they, they want to fight Cody, but Cody's going to avoid them because he's not going to give them what they want until... They, like you said, until they do something to give him a reason to want to it's go. It's kind of him. remember like what Sean going after The Undertaker or uh, like Batista going against Triple H. You know, the line that like, you know, you always say like, give me what I want. Give me what I want. Uh, it's kind of like that. It's like you got to play hard to yeah. get. And then, yeah, and then he, like, he, obvious, like, it's like, oh, you want me? Is that what you really want me? Yeah, You're wrong. To, You're he, wrong. He, he had to kick out. He had him not kick out. He had to beat up a. An old man. I mean, he had to beat up an old man so he could get that awful WrestleMania match. Is that so? Like he pretty much and see, you even you are making a great point because what about like if Lance like beats up Arn? Yeah, you know that would be that would be legit if see? there like, you go. He, he he's beating him up and then Jake the Snake is like in his chair and then he's like and he gets up from the chair and. And that would be awesome. See, excellent. See, John Paul the Booker right there. Please give this guy a contract. Okay, we'll wait till this whole thing is getting better. And please give this guy a chance. You know, uh, it will be my pleasure to just like, you know, I, I'm his advocate. So I deal with the money and everything. So, John Paul, we get a match that like kind of like, I don't I don't understand the point of this. But because we thought it was going to be Keith Sabian and Penelope before going against Cole Cabana, mm-hmm. ex, ex, ex-friend of CM Punk. But like we actually got Darby Allen into this. Yeah, I mean, I would have, if I would have did anything, I would have did a rematch with Cody and Kip Sabian, just because they have a history before, you know, they had a match before, and Cody was even putting that match over on commentary, he's like, I think Sabian was a tougher opponent than Darby Allen, and he's like, maybe it's because of his, like, you, like British strong style, whatever it is, but I would have rather seen that, and I would have rather seen Darby Allen versus Jimmy Havoc, because they're both kind of like that, you know like emo goth kind of you know style and they're both you know they even compared the two of them in that first match to like you know being like having disregard for their own body and you know just beating themselves up beating their opponents up so i feel like that match would have been better and then i feel like that this match of cody and kip saving would have been better because kip's a good a great wrestler and you know cody is is pretty good i wouldn't say cody's like one of the best but like when like they would have had a decent match and he's able, like you said, to get the job done. Yeah. You know, they, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't seem a bad match. It wouldn't yeah. seem like actually decent. And I yeah. agree with you. But uh, to me, it's like it would it should have been Cole Cabana. Yeah, Why? yeah. It should, you know, it should have been. Hell? Like I said, if the like, even though we said earlier they are progressing storylines a little bit, some of them they you know they aren't, and this could be one of them. And again, this could also be because of travel issues. Maybe Cole Cabana didn't want to travel or like couldn't make it out. You know, you don't know what it is, but. Because, you yeah. know, some of these guys probably drive. Like we said, we reported with Edge two weeks ago, drove 17 hours yes. for Raw. So it could be something where these some of these guys drive, and some of them are like, oh, I, you know, they could be like with Edge. It's like, I'm not driving 17 hours. So it could be any of these things. But I, like I you said, you. Match, this match, if you're not looking into the reason why, you're just looking at what we have here, it was a little bit of a strange, you know, matchup. Yes, yes, and then see, like, like in it this was one, like hit, yeah, it was like you hit random when you're like picking a wrestler, you hit square and it just randomizes, and you're like, <laughs> yep, that's the yeah, and I agree with you, like, it didn't make too much sense. And actually, Darby didn't even do his normal finisher, the coffee yeah. drop, it was different. Yeah. So, we're gonna we're gonna take you to some spots and then we'll elaborate a little more. So, uh, keep Sabian, he counters Darby Allen, and then he drills him with his shoulders into the corner. Then Sabian pulls Darby under the bottom rope and bends him around the ring post. Sabian is sent to the outside, and Darby Allen looks for a suicide dive, but Sabian pulls um, Penelope for in front of him, and then Darby turns and hits 
as Kev with the suicide dive on the other side of the ring, on the dark side of the ring. No, no, other side of the ring. Allen then gets distracted by Penelope, allowing Kev to hit a, sp a springboard kick, followed by the time turn for a near fall, and then Sabian delivers a few shots, follow up by Toss up knee, and then Allen hits Sabian with the Last Supper. And see, Tony Giovanni knew the name of the move. He's like, oh, the Last Supper. And then he gets the he gets the win, and, you know, we find out that, like, he has a new finisher now. Yeah, I, I at least, like, I wouldn't, like, I don't mind him having two finishers. This could be something where he's like, hey, if I keep doing this coffin drop, my career is not going to be very long. So, you know, maybe they switch it up for that reason. Who knows? But I wouldn't be like, I mean, how many finishers does The Undertaker have? Hell's Gate, The Last Ride, you know, The Choke Slam. Well, I yeah, guess he really never put people. Low. I, did he ever, was The Choke Slam ever a finisher? At I know that was like a Kane The finisher. Undertaker's career, it was The Choke Slam, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah the, and, and then yeah, the, he turned the, it into signature. Yeah. Yeah, then he has the tombstone. So you know what I mean? Like AJ Styles, phenomenal forearm, Styles Clash, you know. And uh, what's the – the calf, has the, ca the, the calf crusher. So yeah. these guys, you know, you could have more than one finisher. And, it, like, I think that's cool because it, like, it just, you know, adds more to the Darby Allen character. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that that's what we have. Uh, I mean, a decent match. And then mm -hmm. we get uh, Jake Hager. Jake Hager uh, doing, like, I don't want to say another match in Dynamite against Chico Adams. For the ones that don't know, Chico Adams is from is from Florida, so he's friends with Chacha Charlie as well, and he has all the Florida people right there, and they were all praising him. I was seeing on my on my wall, they were like, "Oh, that's legit," because and he even had a tryout for NXT. But uh, I guess the uh, a dynamite is what it was for him. Really quick, to the point. Really yeah, legit. I mean, it was it was cool that you know, like you said, you know, that he was on there, you know, and like you said, friend Chacha Charlie, so that's legit. Every time you just say Chico, though, I just think of Scott Hall. Yeah, you know, it's like, like, just like Chico. And, 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 like, and who the, who, the, who he got the name from? From very freaking Scott Hall, probably. So it was it was legit, and we're gonna. What do you think? I just want to ask you. What do you think of Jake Hager's theme? Do you like it or no? Yeah, sometimes no. when I hear it, I'm like, mm, I don't no. like. I like when they use legit songs. I don't like when they write a song for a guy. Now, like Saliva with Jericho, King of My World, or was that? I think they wrote that for him. That I've not. That I wouldn't have been able to tell him. Maybe because I think they said the walls of Jericho in the song. Unless oh, it's just, unless it's just you know you know unless it's just coincidence. Like you. Know, but anyway, maybe Jericho heard that song and then that's where he got the name of the move. The walls of Jericho. I don't. You know what I mean? Um, I, I doubt that because I think he had it beforehand. It, probably, it was probably written uh, for Jericho. You're probably yeah. right because he line in the sand by Motorhead. Yeah. It was like it's they so WWE probably, approached Motorhead. And he's like, hey, and that's why they introduce evolution or the game. Yeah. Yeah. But um, like I said, when I watch Jake Hager and I see this match, I see him wrestle. I'm like, I'm waiting for this guy to turn baby face and turn on the inner circle. That's just what I saw. I'm just like, I could see him being baby face and the crowd being behind him. Because to me, like, he looks legit and he's legit in the ring. And I'm like, that's why this guy was over in WWE. Yeah. For a yeah. time, he would, there, there was a time where he was over. Oh, yeah. No, no. He, he could have been a great superstar. Remember, he was a uh, world heavyweight yeah. champion. He was going to win the championship for the Rio in WrestleMania 29. But, you know, like the, mm -hmm. you know, he got the a little bit of pod, you know, so like a little bit of broski right there, a little bit of uh, RBD and that. And that. And that's why like the real retain. And that's mm -hmm. why they pulled the trigger with the Ziggler the day after. But like, I, I agree with you. And like, it was a good match. Like I said, like it was pretty quick. It's like Hager attacks Chico and tosses him into the ring post before hitting him with a Bader bomb. And then Hager goes for a power slam, but Chico escapes and it connects with a splash into the corner. Then Chico eats uh, Uranagi and then Hager logs him into the arm triangle and pretty much Chico passes out. So pretty much done. And after you, the match... Jesus, oh my God. When you were reading the notes, I went like this. And then, you, and then so you didn't see it. Then you look up and then you go... That's, yeah, that was, that's how connected we are. We're a good tag here. And see, after the match, uh, we see uh, John Moxley. We see John Moxley. He comes out of the ring right it, away. This might have been one of my favorite parts of the whole show next to the, the actual main event. But, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I just had to... You know. Oh, yeah, no, no, of course. Of course, Jean-Paul. And then he comes out to the ring. He stands in front of uh, Hager, and then they start throwing hands. Then Moxley hits Paradan Shiv on Hager, but then Jake grabs his ankle, but Moxley then knocks him out of the ring, and then they talk trash as, like, Hager retreats, and he's like, oh, so you're not, he's like, oh, so you're walking away. 
I kept hearing that. So you're walking but away. I, I love when Mox, I like when he just comes down. Cause like I said, these guys like Hayer looks so good. And you're like, he could beat up Jericho. Like he could be, a, he's the best guy in the inner circle. If you think about it, like oh, yeah. just looking at everything on paper, like he's the toughest guy in the inner circle. So it's like, but who's the toughest guy in AEW? It's either him or it's John Moxley. Moxley comes down, he charges him, he like hits the paradigm shift, and then he doesn't get up for like m- maybe four or five seconds, not very long, and then instantly in that ankle lock. And I'm like, if anybody's going to kick out of a paradigm shift, you know, it might be him. If they have a match, he might have to hit, you know, two or three to put him away. And that's and like they, a they match seem, I'm really and, looking you know what? In the, and you know what? Uh, what you're saying is like, I think they're going to go that route. It seems like he's going to be the number one contender now. It doesn't yeah. seem like Jericho is going to be the one. No, I don't. That's what I mean. I don't know. And then like, that could, like I said, that could cause dissension that I don't think he'll win it. But I mean, that could cause dissension for him in the inner circle in a sense for Jericho is like, oh, like, like, oh, yeah, you're going to win the title and give it to me. Right. And he's like, no. Yeah, and then it will be like, kind of like Batista in uh, yeah. Triple H or yeah. like Randy Orton against Triple H with Evolution. Yeah, it will be around that. And talking about that, John Mox does a promo backstage and he says he told everyone to watch their blind spot. He can turn them out when he pleases and he's ready to go. He says Jake Hager walk away tonight, but when things come head end to a title is on the line, then there will be no walking away. He'll be carried out on a stretcher. So, so like like you said, they're probably going that route, and it's not bad. No. You know, Jake Hager, like you said, Drake Hager is, is out of the, everybody in AEW. He's the most legit one. He did the transition to MMA, and he's good. He's on the Yeah, that's what I mean. There's, like, if you're, like, who is going to be more legit to go against John Moxley? There is nobody. Yes. I like, absolutely agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, we haven't seen, well, did we see what we, I don't know. You know he's still employed, but I was going to say we haven't seen Wardlow in a little bit. And there's no real beef with MJF and Moxley. If you think yeah, about so. it, see, they had to change the whole show. Because remember, we didn't get the Lucha Bros at the street fight against, yeah. remember, like the best friends. Yeah. That was completely, like, scrapped. We didn't see Wardlow going against Luchasaurus. That was another yeah. one that was scrapped. So, like, you see, like you said, like the travel issues, the virus. This whole situation is freaking, is damaging everything. Yeah, like, yeah. And like I said, I'm not trying to, you know, we got to think positive or otherwise we're going to go crazy. But I mean, and who knows, in a couple of weeks, they might they might not even have shows at all. Yeah, they, they, you're absolutely right. So like, is we got to at least enjoy with my, what we have for mm-hmm. what, how long we have it. But absolutely right. And like you said, hopefully this turns out into a match because it's, it generates a lot of interest because uh, Jack Hager, he's probably the most legit in that roster. The most oh, legit yeah. guy, like a... They're like being an MMA, like undefeated, and his moveset is pretty decent. And he was always a good wrestler, just like I guess he made a few mistakes in WWE. And you know, when you make a mistake, either you pay for like the longest time, or you just gotta go and you never consider again. And that's what happened with him. So now, John Paul, we get a whole video package with the exalted one, Brody Lee. Like we get, like I said, like what happened a little bit on last week, and then we see Brody Lee actually eating. We got to see eating like his steak. He's legit, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, you guys are not, you guys need to wait till I'm finished, like, until I'm done eating. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was, it was I think it was Alex Shelley and, uh, or not Alex Shelley, Alex, uh, I forget what, oh, uh, what is it? It's, what are their names? No, I forgot. John no, Silver, uh, John Silver and Alex Reynolds. That's Yes, it. Alex Reynolds, it, yes. Yeah, so like, they go to eat when he's like talking, like yelling at him. And he's like, he's like, what are you doing? Do I look like I'm done eating? And then he's like, "Get out of here!" And then I, I think that was uh, Silver. And then and uh, Alex and Reynolds sneezes. And then sneezes, and he's like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, dude. So then he kicks him out of there. And to me, they like I want to get your opinion on this because I feel like they they're trying to do it in like a way that like you kind of don't notice it, but the the Dark Order to me was more like satanic in the sense of like the Undertaker, like when he had like you know. The, the Ministry of Darkness. Ministry, yeah, yeah. Like, that's the kind of, like, you could put Evil Uno in them, and, like, the, you could have had The Undertaker from 1998 come out. You yes. know what I mean? Or, like, 2000, you know, that's what you could have come out, and it would have made perfect sense. Brody Lee is trying to, like, be half that, but also be Bray Wyatt, because to me, that eating in the suits with the family and all that, like, you can't eat till I eat. And, like, Cody was saying on commentary, like, oh, daddy has to eat first. 
to me that seems more like a like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like a redneck yes. murder family. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? So I feel like they're uh, kind of shifting. Like they're not keeping it what it was supposed to be. And it's supposed to be spooky and evil. Now they're making it like kind of redneck family. Like uh, whatever what, what was that show? Uh, Dog Dynasty. Kind of yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Ex except I, I don't, I do like how they're not copying like the Wyatt family. Like they're not coming out dressed as like dirty like hicks and hillbillies. Yes. He's still wearing his suit and he's still, you know, he's not speaking. You know, he's speaking how he speaks. He's not putting on like an accent or trying to be whatever. But I feel like they are twisting it into that direction. But you know, it. I like I said, everything with what's going on, it's just hard to gauge how well this is getting over because there's nobody there. And but also, me personally, like, I agree. Like I said, I agree. Yeah. And also, like, like, we don't know if that's going to last because it might change within the week. But, like, uh, personally, I will tell you, yeah, I don't like it too much. Yeah. Because me, exalted one, you know, when you use that kind of, like, language, exalted one, like you said, bring me back to the Ministry of Darkness, spooky, like, holy, if you want to call it, like, this guy that everybody respects, rather than this dude that, like, <laughs> is treating everybody poor, bad, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you don't need If anything, yeah, it should have been, like, like I don't like he he should just be like sitting there on like a throne with like his hood and his robe on and stuff and he, like it should be like oh you know like up next we have the exalted one and like his entrance thing should be like he like gets off like his throne like Alistair like, Black fall. kind of like 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 yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. Like, you see a, clo a close up yeah. a close yeah. shot and then and yeah and you treat the exalted one like you know like like the exalted one like a person that is uh, like different than everybody yeah, else yeah, and you know like how King Corbin would come to the ring. I'm not saying you got to carry this guy out on a, like a throne every time. But to me, that's a character who deserves it. Cause you have all those creepers. Like he's supposed to have his army of creepers there. Yes. They should be carrying him out on a throne or something like that. You know? Yeah. I agree to no, no. To me, I didn't like it too much. Well, he had a match. He has his debut match on AEW. He went against QT Marshall, and Brandy introduced him as like from New York. And, and Cody goes, "No, no, no. He's not from New York. He's from New Jersey." So he, she got that wrong and everything. The match was a, it was decent. The one thing is like QT Marshall is like a glorified jobber. Oh, oh yeah, that's that. He's Michael Nakazawa, like him, and like they're two peas in a pod. You know, so they're yeah. They, you he, know, they just he, he's not everything. to be. Yeah, he's not to be presented in a legit way. At least yeah. at this time, like when you see him, you know he's gonna lose. Yeah. He might have a he might have a decent showing for thirty seconds, but you know his back is gonna be on the mat for the one, two, three. Yes, yes, so. and um, and that's what happened because uh, pretty much Brody Lee sends QT back inside and he sees a tope over the robe on him, and you see like you see like uh, Brody look, he's massive. And see, that's oh, going yeah. to be a great, you know, addition to the AEW roster. Then he goes for a running elbow in the corner, and then another one followed by a face lock, face lock suplex. Then Brody hits a brain buster and a running forearm to the back. Then Marshall fights back with two right hands and Inziguri, and then another Inziguri. And then QT leaves over him, but then he gets caught with the spinning sidewalk and the spinning sidewalk slam. And then a disc is lariat for the win. So we see kind of like yeah. the same move set, but mm -hmm. in the end, Brody Lee gets the win. Now, what do you think of his finisher? He almost catches him. It looks like he's almost going to do like Sister Abigail. You know what I mean? Like, it looks like he's almost going to like do the kiss and that, but he catches him in that and then spins him out and then hits him with the discus. I don't like the setup. I feel like at least the two times we've seen him hit that move, because I think he did it on Christopher Daniels or he yes. did it on somebody. Yes. He like, it's very slow. Like it look like when he spins them out and then is bringing them into the clothesline. It to me it just looks really slow. Like it, it looks like he is like I would rather see him just like hit like a like a JBL type clothesline. Oh, the clothesline from hell! I yeah, would much like a JBL that. Stan Hansen Stan type Hansen. clothesline. Like just yeah. just spin this guy around. Like to like he slows them down. He takes him to a dead stop and then tries to spin him into that. And unless the guy you now, if he did that to, like, a Darby Allen or somebody of that size who could really move, they'd sell the hell out of it. But a guy like QT Marshall and an older guy, you know, no offense, Christopher Daniels, they're not going to be able to move and sell that clothesline to make it look that devastating. Because to me, I, that looks like a move that should get you at most a two count. And he's putting people away with it. So. And then, see, like, 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 I would much rather see just the sidewalk, the sidewalk slam, you know, because that's got, like, a big bossman used to finish people. You know, mm -hmm. he will be like, oh, you know, he will be all the way speed up, you know, 100%, 100 miles an hour, catches him, boom, one, two, three. Yeah. 
I yeah. mean, I like he he hit some good suplexes and brain busters. I feel like he could do some sort of brain buster move. You know, do something. But I, like I said, we'll see. I, I'm still excited for him. I'm, I'm excited he's being used. The one thing that bothered me is Cody said it at least three times. Oh, I know him as a different name, but here, Brody Lee. Why do you need to refer to WWE? That's like, yeah, I, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's here at AEW. Just I'm not I'm not even going to say like, oh, Cody, you're being petty. Why do you need to bring them up? I'm not even getting into that. The only thing I want to say is he's here in AEW. So just refer to him as he's in AEW. That would be like. You know, I was telling you I was watching Slammiversary 2005. That would be like if they went Road Dog and Billy Gunn, if they are talking about them, like, oh, you know, he was known as another name, but here he's the outlaw. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, and it's like, no, just call him what he is. Why would you, like, because when you say, oh, I know him as another name, people are going to go, oh, WWE. Oh, yeah, they have NXT on tonight. Click. Yeah, Why uh, even remind them great, of your competition? Great, great point. And also, like, okay. Just to like finish on that because like you're making like an absolutely brilliant point is okay. This guy is the exalted one. So you're telling me that like over there he was a nobody. So how yeah, am I supposed exactly. to believe that like a nobody comes over here and he's a so exalted one? So come on, let's have a little bit of like you said. The past is the past. You know, bring uh, sell me on the exalted one. Yeah, Don't it, sell it, me uh, on like Luke Harper. If, yeah, if I'm going to be honest, like, and again, it's hard to gauge right now, but there's some water coming into the ship, like, like the bottom, the, the bottom, uh, you know, place of the ship, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the anatomy of a pirate ship, but there's some water coming through, you know, they're, they're trying to plug the holes right now. The exalted one didn't take off, in my opinion, the way that I think it should have. Like I said, that it was a weird promo with the food and just everything. It's I like, told and, you and, that it should have been It should have been yeah. hard. It is a lot better because we're going to talk about the main the main event. But before we had a little bit of a, a video package with Nick Jackson was attacked was attacked by the inner circle. And we see the replay from that, and then we cut to a clip of like a band the Vanguard one, and then Martha Hardy's drone, and it's his spine of Nick Jackson training in his shed. So mm -hmm. like mm, kind of weird. I don't we don't I don't really yeah, know. They're, where. Yeah, they're, they're trying to copy Ninja Turtles when you know he's training in the shed. You know before yeah. they go back and fight Shredder. You know Pretty that's much. legit. Yeah, they're doing like like that, and I mean, I do get that. It was, it was it was it was to me a little bit different. I will say that. But then we're gonna go to the kind of like the main event and a match, and that mm -hmm. was for the AAA Mega Championship, and that's Kenny Omega going against Sami Guevara. Good match, good match. But uh, you know, like John Paul has been saying throughout this whole time, we've been covering Dynamite, another glorified job. Puts the match of the night, but in the end, what happens? He loses. Mm -hmm. Can you ever yeah, win? And, and no. it, and that, but like, and I understand what you're saying, but I mean, it was cool because it's like, okay, you know, Sammy, Spanish God, all this stuff. But if you like, you know, really go into it, it's like, hey, like he's, I don't know if he, if he ever wrestled in AAA, but it's like, this was probably a big thing for Sammy, you know, being, you know, Spanish background and everything. So it was good for him to probably have this match. But yeah, like, is Kenny, is, is, is Kenny going to lose the belt? No. So to me, this is one of those things. I'm not going to be like, oh, Sammy looks like a loser. Because he put on a hell of a match, you know, and the right guy still won. So I'm going to, like, counter, like, what you said a little bit with that. But, I mean, this, like I said, it was a great match. And Sammy's day will come. It's just, I don't know. I feel like if he wins as a heel, like, it's going to be like, okay, yeah, whatever. It's like, he must, once the inner circle breaks off and he kind of becomes babyface, then I think they'll do something. Then it will be better. The one thing I did, I really kind of like, it was kind of weird that, like, he grabbed the picture of Brandy, and he starts to make, he starts to make it out with her, and then you see, like, a shot of Brandy, and Brandy's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, wacko. Woo. So, uh, like you said, great match, and see, like, I would say Cody, at least he knew a lot, all the moves, he was selling it. Like, I, I, I saw a lot of intensity in this particular moment. In this particular, yeah. and I, they they were talking about um because what you said about uh, Cody on commentary, they did say like Taz, Jim Ross, Excalibur, they're all legit. They just couldn't make it with traveling, and he's like, you know, J Jim Ross leaves big shoes to fill. I know I'm not doing as good as he is, but he's like, I'm blowing Excalibur out of the water. Oh yeah, yeah, I was he like, did say that. Yeah. I was and, like, and, I was... and I remember Giovanni said, "Oh no, oh, well, for a match like this, Excalibur will like pretty much whacking. Like it will be yeah. like, oh, it will be jizzing all over this yeah. match. So like that was like, really cool." So we're gonna go to like the like always like the last sequences of the match. Kenny counters Sammy with a power bomb, and then he he flips him over to hit a B trigger, and they will sell him that. Oh, B trigger! 
and then Omega looks for a Liger Bomb, and see, they both call her the Liger Bomb. So that's legit. At least, you know, talk it, instead of, like, calling, like, different names, say the, the original name. But don't they? They I think they called the Crucifix power. Didn't they, they call it a Razor's Edge in, in AEW, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I think they did refer to it as a Razor's Edge. So I like when they do stuff like that. Yeah, because it's like you're giving, you know, tribute to the person except, that made it. Pop except pop. I think... I think Excalibur calls it six one nine. I think he still calls it the Tiger Faint Kick. I don't yes. think he calls it a six one nine. Yeah, which and, is... and, and and yeah, it's just Rey Mysterio. So he gets a Liger Bomb, but Sammy counters with a Hura Karana, and then Guevara goes up to the top, but Omega dodges a shooting star press. Beautiful move. Omega mm -hmm. hits another V trigger, followed by a massive knee to the jaw. After by and then Guevara starts biting his hand. He's like ah, duh. so that yep. was kind of cool. And then Omega with a Snapdragon, but Guevara lands on his feet, and then he hits a hit to the head. And then Guevara hits a Burning Hammer knee. I really like that move. Oh, the yeah. Hammer. That was a really, you know, flips him over, boom. Yeah, it and almost knee... reminds you of, like, the Ushigoroshi. Ushigor is it yeah, Ushigoroshi or yeah, Go to Sleep? Yeah, kind of like yeah, a mixture yeah. of both. And then Kenny, no sells it at all, and then he hits another V trigger. I, I I hate that in matches, and that's a big thing in like Japan. For example, yeah, yeah, that's a big thing in like Japan, and in, and you see it a lot in Indies, which they probably took it from Japan, and a big thing in AEW. At least in WWE, you almost never see that. That would be like imagine if like you know Lesnar hit like the F five on McIntyre, and he no sold it, and then hit the Claymore and pinned him. To me, exactly. I'm like, okay, you just bury this guy and you bury his move. So Sammy hits this like burning hammer, you know, you know. He hits it. The, he hits it perfectly. Knee, was and good. he hits it good. And then Kenny's like, eh, no, I'm good. Like yeah. me, like you're done. It and reminded like, okay. me of like Triple H doing the pedigree to the Ultimate Warrior, and then yeah. he flips back up. Yeah, yeah. you know, like, yeah, like okay, man, that was that was so bullshit, dude. It was. I remember watching that media match, and I'm like, you gotta be kidding. It is, it's like you know, example. We we love Dragon Ball. It's like Kamehameha, and Freezer just goes like, yeah, and, and, and you see like the reaction is like, I hit you with my best move, and nothing. Yep. So. No sells it at all. And then Omega, another beat trigger. I love the beat trigger, but again, he over overdoes that. He still has that Japan mentality. Followed oh, and, by... And yeah, I mean, that's like Destino. That's like super kicks. You know, that's like, like Rainmaker. You need to hit like 20 of them. And mm -hmm. then he follows by a J Driller for a near fall. And then Omega hits another beat trigger. Nah, you know, I'm not just overselling it, but a four. Okay. Followed by the one win angel. And like you always say, John Paul, they protect that move with their lives. So what happened? One, two, three for the win. Like you said, the Ryan man wins. Good showing for Zami. He's a mm -hmm. hell of a wrestler, but you said hopefully his time comes right after all these uh, storylines come to an end and the new fresh ideas come into AEW. So now we go to the meet and greet. Face to face, Matt Hardy goes against Le Champion, Chris Jericho. Good, a really funny point is uh, how like he got the cameraman going like, Judas in my mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the mark, he's like... Uh, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've become, I've become, I've become. And so, like, he comes out to the ring, and again, like I said, he starts to do that, and then he starts to talking about Matt Hardy. He says, uh, he he says, like, the, he's an arrogant son of a bitch, and then the elite are just bitches, and he wants Matt to join the inner circle. He says that Matt has been, you know, um, on the other yeah. thing, and he yeah, also and he... mentions the company, and that that's the one thing I don't like. Is like, like you, I agree with you. Like, don't mention like it's like if he's like broken Matt Hardy, don't just acknowledge that like a month ago he was on WWE. Yeah, and he, I do like how like Vanguard came out and he tried to recruit Vanguard. That was like the best thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. Was, he, was, he was right there, and he's like, oh, man. he's like, come to the inner circle, come to the inner circle, and he says he's known Matt for 25 years and he wants to give him another chance and he wants to join to the inner circle. And like John Paul was saying, John Vanguard comes and then he's trying to like recruit like Vanguard to the inner circle, but doesn't happen. And then Matt Hardy once again is on the top of the arena by the camera. They do like a, they keep flashing it. Back yeah, and they, forth. yeah, they do like a cut. Cause it, the first time I was just looking at Hardy and then he moved. And then when he jumped the second time, then I just watched Jericho. And you could see Jericho was completely still, as in, like, they probably had, like, a, a picture of Jericho. Like, not that, like it was a cutout, but they took, like, two layers of film and just, like, you know, yeah. put them together. Yes. So, because, like, Jericho would have been moving, like, his hair, because when it was, like, you didn't see his hair moving at all, and there was still. nothing. Yeah, still, it was yes. completely still, yeah. so yes. you could tell, like, he wasn't there, and they were doing these jump cuts. But see... People be like, oh, that look corny, that looks so fake, that look like a you know, like a college movie project or high school movie project. 
I don't care because at least they're buying into their. If you're going to sell a character, this is how you got to do it. Matt Hardy having these these broken powers and teleporting and all this stuff. Like, you got to go in, all in on it. You can't be like WWE and be like half in, half not really. Because yeah. then the character won't get over. That's why the, the Woken, Woken gimmick didn't get over. So, like, you got, like, that's what I mean. I was happy they did this stuff like, and they're really like buying said, in on the character. Either you're. Either you're in it or you know you're not doing it at all. And I like you said, I agree with you. So he was doing the like I said, tele teletransportation teleporting. Yeah, yeah, he was then keep disappearing and reappearing. And then he stands in front of the row with his arms out, and then he gets in the ring, and Jericho's looking freaking out. And Hardy says, Jericho knew he'll come, and Y2J saying it's been booked for a week. He's like, Yeah, like it was like, you know, we said this for a week. So yeah, I knew yeah. you were coming. So it's like it's kind of like a lot of uh, like it's real, but at the same time it's kind of like really dude. <laughs> it's kind of like really well so that's what i like about jericho like you know obviously matt hardy was like you knew like one day our pass would cross again he and he meant like for them to fight and this and that and then jericho was like well how can i be a dick he's like oh yeah he's like well oh yeah of course i knew it was booked since last week yeah so that's a, like that's why you gotta love jericho you can always you know he, he can come up with the joke with anything Oh, yeah, for example, also, he says, hey, can you tell me how you did that magic thing thing? Yeah. <laughs> and tell me how did you do that? That was really cool. And then he's like, he's saying that in honor for Matt to be here, but he wants to explain how things work here. This is his company. He built it. He organized it. And then he runs it. So Matt needs to align with him and not the elite. Then Hardy says, the bugs of youth resurrect him, and he owns an adapt. And on top of that, he sings Jericho tyranny. And then he says, AEW represents freedom for, to him. Shout out WWE. And then he can't allow the inner circle to ruin paradise. Jericho says he resurrects careers too. He saved Jake Hager. And then he made the likes of Sammy Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz all the inner circle. He tells him not to make a mistake and join the elite. Matt says Jericho doesn't understand. He might recognize his bezel, but there's a different entity behind the wheel. And he is Damascus. And he's 3,000 years old. So he's a little old, too old, you know. He's, he looks good for like a 3,000 yeah. years ago, man. So Jericho says that if... if If he's that old, he must really be really wise. He appreciates the outfit and the hair. Very sassy, but inside, he is still Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy says he feels the same way about Jericho. He's a chameleon, but inside, he's always evil. Jericho says that Matt has never been the man. He's always lived under the shadow of his brother. Shout out WWE Jeff Hardy. And a victim of bad booking. So you see, like, reality, and at the same time, you see, like, a little bit of fiction. Or fiction within reality. So then Hardy says he's... In nobody's shadow, Jericho asks if he will want to join to the inner circle instead of the elite. And then Matt says, delete. And they go into a back and forth. Delete. <laughs> delete. Yeah, delete, goes, elite, delete, 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 delete. Delete, yeah. And then yeah. they start going back and forth. And then Matt sings a song because he's like, I know like you you sang Judas. And he starts singing a song about the, the, to the like kind of like the tune of Judas. And then Jericho says, there's no one here to sing along or the chant of like his stupid catchphrases. So Matt says, there Aaron essences here, including Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> and then Martin Luther King, and Maximilian. So Jericho says that he cannot see them, and Matt says he knows he needs to see the entity that will delete him. So Jericho says he can see anything except for the same old Matt Hardy. Jericho slaps him, but then Hardy slaps him back and drops Jericho, and then Jericho says that Matt is really magic, but so is he, and then he goes abracadabra, and then Sammy Guevara attacks Matt Hardy from the back, And then right away, Kenny Omega and Cody come out with the chair shots. They start beating him up. And then Jericho and Sammy Guevara retreat. And then we get to see just uh, Hardy, Omega, and Cody, and then retreat. And then the show was off the air. Do I think that it was a legit uh, promo? At times, yes. At times, kind of like I, like I told you, I felt that I was like in my theater class. You know, pretty, a lot of impro. I will say a lot of uh, plan of playing with like, just like in one of the situations, Jean Paul. You're in like Arby's or like you're in a restaurant. Okay, boom, go. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, they present your situation and just keep going with what you're given. Yeah. Did I like it? Yeah, like some parts. Not, I'm not saying you're my Yeah, I think, I think I want your thoughts it, I think what ruined it for me, and, and not that I think it was bad, because it, it, this was definitely up there with my favorite part of the show, besides, like I said, the interaction between Moxley and uh, Hager. Yeah, Hager. And, yeah and, the, and the match beforehand was good too, but. If it, that had really no storyline implications. So if we're going to storyline stuff, I like Hager and Moxley, and I like this. I wish their altercation would have just been between the two of them. I don't wish Guevara would have got involved. I wish it would have been something like 
he goes for the Judas effect and he either like dodges it or he hits it and then he leaves and then he's leaving the ring and then Hardy sits up and <laughs> like does his laugh. I wish it would, it would have been something like that where it would have just been contained with the two of them. And I also would have now this is just a personal thing, me being a mark. But I would have popped if when he was like, oh, you live in your brother's shadow. And he would have said something like, you know, brother Nero is not here right now. You know, blah, blah, blah. He's like, but soon, you know, like he, I wish Hardy would have called, like, called him brother Nero. Yeah. I feel like if would have name dropped him, that would have been cool. And it would have got the fans like, oh, maybe he's going to come here. Maybe Jeff already talked to him and said, dude, as soon as my contract's up, you know, let's get a storyline going. Let's get something. So I, that would have been cool. But like I said, this promo was good. Again, there was a lot of like mentioned hinting at WWE right now, and it's like, you know, I again, I don't think they're trying to be petty. I think they're just trying to use it to get the storyline over. But, you know, I could have did without it. But some some of it's warranted. Like he is the like he said with bad booking, but you don't want to bring up that somebody was a loser somewhere else if you're trying to get them over. That's yeah. the only reason I don't like it. Like you can both, bring it both, up. Both you guys. Can bring, you can bring it up if, like, they had great matches for, like, mid-card titles and stuff like that. You can bring that stuff up. But don't be like, oh, you were a loser four weeks ago, and now you're here in the main event. Because that's what he's saying. Your main event is filled with WWE's losers. Now, we know, we know that he's not a loser, not a reject. We know it was WWE who misused him. But, you know, the common people and just, you know, if you just look at what Jericho is saying then yeah, you are saying that their main event is made up of WWE rejects. Yes, yes. And then you, I agree with you. And like that's the one thing that they need to focus on is like a step away from WWE and give us just more like uh, just a, a, the identity of AEW. Just yeah, give if, like, if no, anything, what you do yeah. here is, you know, it's like, it's like a fresh start. Yeah, if know? anything, it should just be you talk about what, you know, you can refer to him as a world champion. I mean, because... Or like any type of champion from any championships you won in WWE, you can say, oh, he was a tag champ, you know, he was a IC champ or like, you know, whatever. But I would refer, I would just mostly go to his TNA past. Yeah, if I would much rather hear stuff, TNA. I would rather just, yeah, I would just refer to the TNA stuff to be like, oh, yeah, like, you know, you're not the Matt Hardy of old who was, you know, TNA champ or this or that. Like, that's what, like, I would go like that route or like. Were they ever in Ring of Honor, or was it just TNA? Yeah, they were, yeah. Yeah, they yeah were that's, what I, mean. yeah. Yeah, they that's what I mean. So I would, like, that would be the past I would refer to. And if anything, you know, like, just to, like, you know, I think that it's important to mention that he was broken Matt Hardy on Impact. So maybe yeah. they should mention Impact a little more rather yeah. than, you know, WWE. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah Impact, TNA, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever they were at the time. Yeah, and then, and, yeah. But, you know, this concludes the show. Uh, we got again applaud AEW because at least they gave us, like you said, fresh matches. Where, where was the show that we were expecting? Probably not, but at least we applaud the effort. We applaud the fact that like they're still trying to give you matches over stories. And like you said, there's little things to improve. But hey, you know, again, I'm more thankful that we still have shows to watch because, mm -hmm. as you guys all know, we're all pretty much in close. We're like this is like a, I would say a glorifying inmate. <laughs> glorifying jail that we have because we can actually don't we cannot able to leave our houses because of the situation that is going on so any closing thoughts john paul before we go off the air because we put like the title right there and like no like i said i mean you know like i pretty much just reiterating what everything you said it was like it was a fun show in the sense that it was like it was two hours there were some legit matches some of them might not have made sense storyline wise like just hitting random button on you know 2k19 but, you know, hey, it was better than Raw. It'll definitely be better than SmackDown. So I enjoyed it, you know. Like, I'm just curious to see how next week goes. Like, that's what I mean. Like, you know, we got to see what the real world dictates that the wrestling world will do. But, you know. Exactly. We're, we're here for the ride no matter what happens. So Never, other than that. You know, and I, think, I could yeah. not say it the best. You know, if I could, like, I just got to reiterate that so thank you so much for watching family don't forget to hit that subscribe button we have tons of content like i said bell for all notifications and social media world like you know jean paul always iterates this you know facebook twitter instagram we're always putting stuff we're going to be putting more like a, all the highlights from aw a highlights for nxt tomorrow nxt review jean paul and myself so thank you so very much guys and in the name of jean paul and me we both want to say 
Ah! Ah!